Okay, this is part 12 in the Game Engine Physics uh, tutorial series for new Blender users. All right, so in this previous lesson, we looked at moving the object along based upon a value that was stored in a variable called cube count. So in, now we're going to do something else. We'll continue using variables or properties, as they're formally called within here. and But we'll do some rotations and some other little tricks that might help you out along the way. So let's just go back into the uh, logic brick window real quick. And so when we had gotten to say 70 we then moved the object back in the opposite direction all right so let's me zoom this in just a little bit so you can see it so in this case what we'll do instead of moving it let's rotate it so let's just make it we'll make this zero and we'll rotate it on the z-axis say five degrees like this and then let's go back and take a look at it uh oh got lost there it is all right and we don't really need this window I'll get rid of this so you know. okay so let's run the simulation so so it's equal 10 20 30 40 50 it takes off 60 it stops at 70 you should start rotating and there it does it just rotates right around its own origin all right now let's try something for the moment let's take this cursor place it right here in the scene right about you know there so it's around the 3d cursor because you know how sometimes when you're building within blender render or blender game and you're building your models and you want to rotate something differently you might rotate it well actually let's just look at it from above let's put let's put it down here and say sometimes I want to rotate that object well if you look down here it's it's by default a median point is where it's rotating it so if I just said rotate it around Z it rotates it like that but if I wanted to rotate it around the 3D cursor, I can place it there and I rotate around Z and it rotates like that. Well, maybe that's the effect I want in the game. Well, let's see if that actually works. By changing this pivot point to the 3D cursor, let's move our view back like this. Here, there's our cursor. So when it gets to the rotation point, let's say I, instead of rotating around its center, I'm trying to make it rotate around the cursor. So I'm going to start it up, press it, one, two, three, four, five times there's the sixth time there's the seventh time it starts rotating but it's rotating around its own origin so this doesn't play into the part so how do you do that so I wanted to rotate around maybe I wanted to get this is like our little satellite that's going to rotate around our sphere and our cone like that well you have to trick things sometimes so like I said a lot of it is about faking things and tricking things and things like that so let's try it by going into edit mode because this this is just so important yes it is so I'll move the I'll move the cube back to this location so it's approximately located where this cursor is set right here but now when I go into edit mode well let me move my I mean cursor to selected all right so there it's there you know the center of the object is indicated by this little orange dot right there in the center that's the Center. So what we're going to do, we'll go into edit mode, and we're going to grab the green arrow. Now, while I'm in edit mode, I'm just going to move the cube away from it like this. So it's far away, and then I'm going to leave edit mode. And then I'm going to take the cube, and I'm going to move it back to where I started, back to here, like this. So the scene pretty much looks just like the way it was a minute ago, except, however, notice our origin we have left behind here and the purpose being is that when the rotation command takes place from within the logic bricks then it should rotate around its own origin well its origin is back here so by the time this cube gets up into this scene that location then this origin should be up around this location so it should rotate all the way around that because it's you know it's rotating around its origin it should all right, we're going to find out. So let's let's run the simulation. All right, so I press it once, twice, three, four, five. It takes off. I press it six time. It stops. Now we didn't, we can't see the origin in here, but we can approximate it. And this is where you have to tweak things as you go. Now we we'll press it the seventh time. There it goes. Oh yes. All right. So that's a good little trick of the trade to help you out. And uh, yeah, those origins really matter in a lot of cases. All right, well, that's it for this lesson, and I'll see you in the next lesson.